Hey, what's going on? My name is Al, and this is the ZBrush 101 series. I know it's been a while, but just as a refresher, this is for very, very intro users of ZBrush. And what we're talking about today is ZSphere, super powerful tool. I'm not saying only beginners use this. What I am saying is we're not gonna dive deep into all the intricacies of anything that I teach here. This is to get you up to speed as quick as possible. So take what you learn here and Go do more research, dive deeper, find cooler, better ways to do the same thing. Z spheres, let's do it. Okay, the very first thing we're gonna do, go to Lightbox and we are going to go to Project. Left click and drag all the way to the right until you see this red sphere. This is a Z sphere. Double click that. No, I don't wanna save. And you'll notice this is not like a poly mesh. This is not like something you can sculpt on. This is totally different. We don't have any brushes up here or at least in the same sense of like sculpting brushes. And this is what we got. So we are going to use draw, move, scale, and rotate a lot. When you're on draw, you can press Q. So if you're in W mode, press Q, and you'll notice right where your cursor is, there's that red dot. If you look on the left-hand side of my screen, there's that red circle. So symmetry is on. And then when I left click and drag, I'm drawing out another one of the Z spheres that's attached to the other one. So if I have a large draw size or a small draw size, it doesn't matter. All that matters is when I left click and drag, I'm then kind of scaling this thing up. So we can do that. And then if I want to do there, I can just create these Z spheres in whatever shape that I want. So let's go ahead and do that over here. Uh, you'll notice if I get right in the middle, it's only going to create one. So be careful with that symmetry. Uh, but what if I want to alter this? What if I'm making some horned creatures? So I've started the horns, but I don't like this curvature. That's where we can come in here and I'm still in draw mode. And if I left click and drag on a joint, I can't move it. I've actually added another Z sphere in between those two joints, so to speak. So here is the end point, right? And I can drag and drop. I can drag and drop on any of these like large spheres. But if I go in between and just click, I'm adding one right in between those joints. I'm gonna press W and now I'm in move. So I can just left click and drag to move these spheres around. So we decided this was gonna be a horned creature. So I'm gonna take these spheres, just left clicking and dragging on the sphere part themselves to get a better shape. And you know what, let's make these horns just like a little bit longer and maybe a little bit more interesting with like the spiral. So one thing you can do is stretch them out like this and then press Q to go back and we know we can insert a joint in between. So I'm gonna click the the bone, so to speak, in between. The only reason I call it a bone is just because it looks like a, a bone shape, like in Maya or something. Press W, and then I basically gave myself more resolution. Press Q, tap, giving myself more resolution to make this thing happen. So let's just move those, something like that. Great, some crazy weird horns. If I move one sphere, I'm just moving the sphere. If I move in between a sphere, so this is just moving this sphere, Look what happens if I move in between. You'll notice that it's moving basically everything lower down the chain instead of just this joint. So you have some interesting things you can do there. Next up, let's press E for scale, or you can click scale up here. Obviously, this is just going to scale the spheres if you're clicking and dragging on the sphere itself or in between. I'm scaling all that joint chain up or down. So so I don't really like this taper. The taper looks good here and this gets a little too small. So let's increase this one and this one just a little bit. Make this one smaller. There we go. It's got a more natural transition. Let's press R for rotate and discuss that. So just clicking on a sphere, you'll notice it's kind of like if I rotate my my shoulder, it's kind of doing all of the, the joint chain down like so. And then in between, you'll notice I get a different rotation axis. So if I want to change that, super easy, convenient with W for move, E for scale, R for rotate and all of those. If I want to hop back in, do some more adding of these E-spheres. I was doing some horned creature, right? Let's go ahead and quickly just do like a neck and a body. Remember, as soon as those red circles turn green, that means you're on that center axis. If they're not, you're gonna have two Z spheres, which is not gonna work out. So let's do, I don't know, the neck comes down. Let's say this is where the shoulders go. Let's press Q. 
There we go. Almost like a Minotaur-like creature, except this is way too small. He's got a giant head. So we know that we can scale that up. Let's press E for scale. Find that sphere right there. There we go. Let's increase this guy. Increase those shoulders. There we go. That's feeling a little better. Press Q so we can draw these arms down. And don't forget, you can just pull these down. Press Q, tap somewhere in between, and then we've kind of added one of those joints in there. Okay, you get the idea. So this is like a bust of this character. I could do fingers, toes, I could do the whole thing, but I can't sculpt on this yet. So the next step is on the right-hand side, go to adaptive skin. And like I said, there's many ways to do this. This is how I do it. Press preview. Preview is just a just that. It's a preview of this. It looks terrible, right? This doesn't look like a minotaur or whatever, some kind of horned creature but it's got me to a block out. Now, I personally don't like how high resolution this is. So what I'm gonna do is pull the density down to maybe two. Sometimes you have to toggle on and off preview and then Dynamesh resolution, you could lower that as well. So a density of one would look like this, but you'll still see there's still pretty like high resolution. So if I were to increase this to 800, hit preview, toggle it on and off, you're gonna see there are lots of polygons in this preview. And if I pull Dynamesh resolution way down as well, toggle preview, this is what I'm getting, something like this. Now I'm fine with something like this, terribly low resolution because it's just to block out. When I like it, I'm gonna go to make adaptive skin and watch right up here when I click that. This says skin Z sphere. So this currently I'm still on the preview. If I want to sculpt, let's click this. Boom. I'm in this tool. It's no longer Z spheres. This I can sculpt on. So let's go to clay build up. And now I can begin sculpting this character. I have sculptures pro mode, all the things that you've learned, and you can just sculpt away. Let's take a look at something that's awesome for beginners or just you want practice. Play around with Z spheres, create your own. That's where the power comes in. But Take a look at this. Let's go to Lightbox. We have Z spheres here. So we have a Z sphere cave troll. Double click this. No, I don't want to save that. You could use this as the base of your character. It's already made. Maybe you have some behemoth like character. The Z spheres are all set up. So if you don't really like that, let's press E. Let's scale the shoulders up. Or remember in between, let's do something like that. Scale those giant arms up for your character. You could use this, use adaptive skin, whatever, make adjustments. So there are lots of different different things you can do here, or at least there's a handful. But if we back up one folder, so we're gonna go to project Zizu, there are dozens and dozens of just pre-made Z-Sphere creatures. So here's a spider, how cool is that? So we've got this whole system that we can move, we can adjust the Z-Spheres. You need to just practice sculpting on a spider. So let's say I wanted to do that. Take this as is adaptive skin, make adaptive. There is my actual skin that I can then come through here, use all my sculpting tools that I would like to sculpt this cool spider however I want as practice or just take it, make it my own kind of creature, whatever. Lots of cool things. Remember that Z-Spheres are used to block out a character quickly. Don't spend forever on Z-Spheres, get a feel for them, block out your character. And then, and that is the whole point of Z-Spheres is to get to sculpting as quickly as possible. It's pretty awesome, I like it. Now, if you'd like to see my favorite method of blocking out characters, watch this video.